What's good everybody, uh, Big C Nano 210 here, and I'm back with part 3 of part 4 of my 7 days to die slash any gaming ultimate networking guide. Alright then, so now we are up to part 3. Um, we've already done IP addressing, we know how the IP address system works, we know how to port forward from our router to our server, and now we're going to cover the topic of static IPs and why static IPs come in rather handy. Um, so, first off, what the f*** is a static IP? Now, it's kind of like the name on the tin, kind of thing, in the sense of it's, it's an IP address that's static. Now, by static, what we mean is it doesn't move. It sits, and it is what it is. It doesn't change, okay? Um, so, there we go. It's an IP address that doesn't change. It can be set at the server level, so what that means is, or the PC level. Um, so it means you set the, the static IP on the machine. And then uh, what you do is you can reserve the IP at the DHCP slash router level. Now DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, okay? But we'll get to that stuff in a minute. Don't worry about, oh, I'm never going to remember this shit. All right, just forget that it's called DHCP. Just We'll just call it the router at the minute, okay? Or the router, if you're American. Okay, so... Um, picture this. Let's talk about how IP addresses get given out. Now, we've got our internal network. We're, we're going to forget about the external network at the minute. Now, we know that our router has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. And we know our server has 192.168.1.106. And we know that you on your PC, or my PC, has 192.168.1.110. Now, these IP addresses, these two, were given out by the DHCP server, which is actually a function that's built into routers. Um, so basically, if say I was to connect my cell phone to this network using Wi-Fi or something like that, then what would happen is that um, in order for my cell phone to get on the network, it would go, okay, cell phone, you are now 192.168.1.112, say. And then that's what my cell phone would use in order to access the internet via Wi-Fi. Okay? So, what the problem is, is that, say I had to restart this server, okay? And I had to switch it off and I had to switch it back on. Okay? What would happen is that the router would go, yeah, I remember you. You were you you, you last time you were one nine two one six eight dot one dot one oh six. So you can have that IP address again. And everything's fine. It means that when these guys externally hit the router and they're they're looking for your seven days to die server and the port forward and rule says, Yeah, seven days to die server's on one oh six, it comes down to here. And that still works. Now what can happen is that when the router gives it this IP address, it's called leasing, it le it leases it the address. It's, so it says, here you go, you can use 192.168.1.106 for a certain amount of time, okay? Now, what could happen is that if the lease expires and the server restarts, the next time the server comes back on, the router will, the router will say to it, oh, yeah, hello, Mr. Server, um, here's an address for you, uh, 192.168.1.16. And then what will happen is, is that's what the new IP address will be. And it'll mean that when people are trying to connect to here, it'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, the seven days to die server's on 106. And what will happen is it won't be on 106 anymore because this would have changed to 116. So what will happen is, is that you end up having to go back into here and changing the port forward and rule that you set up to, to point to dot one sixteen instead of dot one oh six because dot one oh six will not exist on the network anymore. So what we do is I'm just gonna hide this now. Whoop. Uh bear with me one second. So what we do is uh, oh here we go. Right. Okay. So now that what we know what to do is that uh, sick. Right, there we go. 
So why set static IP addresses? IP addresses can change, statics don't, which is what I just covered. Sorry about that before I got a bit confused. Um, it saves having to edit the port forward and entries in the event of change over and over again. Okay. Um, and when it's combined with DHCP reservation, it's more secure. So on the router itself, you can reserve an IP address and go, hey, 192.168.1.106 is for the seven days to die server. Okay, so only let the seven days to die server use that address. Okay, so, okay. So now that we know what and why, let's go through how to do it. Okay, so task number one is we're going to set the IP address on the seven days to die server as static. And then task two is that we're going to go back into the router, the same place where we were setting our port forward and rules earlier on. And we're going to reserve the, the static IP address for the seven days to die server so that nobody else can use it. Only the seven days to die server. Okay. So on the seven days to die server, you would go into control panel and you would go into uh, network and sharing center. Um, you would click on adapter settings. And then that would bring up a list of the two network. Well, I'm saying two. My server happens to have two network adapters. It'll bring up the list of all the different network adapters that you've got on your system, whether it's like this is two, two Ethernet ports. You might have a Wi-Fi port or whatever. Um, as we can see, this one's plugged in and this one isn't. So this is the one that we want want to be looking at. So what you would do is you would right click on here and you would go to properties. And that will bring up a box like this. So what you would then do is you would left click on internet protocol version four. And then this properties button would light up and you would press properties. That brings you up a box like this. Okay. So what we want to do here is we want to input the IP address that we want the server to always have. So in our case, we always want the seven days to die server to be on 192.168.1.106. Okay. Um, for subnet mask, I'm not going to go into what a subnet mask is, but usually you would set it as 255.255.255.0. Okay. Now, it's going to ask us what the default gateway is. Now, the default gateway is your router's IP address. So it's kind of like we're trying to trace the way out of the network. So for us, it's 192.168.1.1. Okay. Um, if you can have this set to obtain DNS automatically, that's up to you. I prefer to use Google's DNS, public DNS servers for DNS resolution, which are 8.8.8.8 .8 and Google's backup DNS server is 8.8.4.4. .4. And that just means that you use Google to uh, resolve your DNS names. Okay. So what you would do is you would press OK. And then from here, what you have done is you have set the IP address on this particular network port. So if you plug it into the other net, like if you physically unplug the cable and plugged it into the other network and port, there would be no guarantee that you would be 106. It would be whatever the router gives you. But if you are plugged into this network and port, you guarantee that you are 106 every time. So what we're going to do now is we are going to get the MAC address of this network and port. Okay. Now, so we've got two network and ports and each one of these ports has a literal it's kind of like it's like it's called a MAC address, but it's like a stamp to say that this port is different to this port. It's different to your IP address because a MAC address always stays the same for a particular port. Okay. So what we're going to do now is if we opened up a command prompt, like if you press the windows button, um, oops, and you typed CMD and opened up a command prompt like this, if you type IP config, oops, IP config space slash, slash all and you press enter it will bring up some results like this okay now just looking one second just looking here we can see that actually i'm just going to get rid of these pictures in the background 
we can see that um, Ethernet adapter local area connection is the one that's plugged in. See, local area connection. And that's why it's got all this information. And local area connection 2, which is local area connection 2, is media disconnected. That means it's unplugged. Okay, so we're just going to focus on this one that is plugged in, which is why I've highlighted it in green. And we can see here a physical address. Okay, now this is this is your MAC address, so it's probably worth writing this down. 00-C0-49.59, but obviously yours will be different. Okay, now just to, as a reminder for this tutorial, we're going to remember that mine ends in 7C. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the router and we're going to say the computer with this MAC address is always going to be using this IP address. So don't give it to anybody else. Can you see how this has got preferred as well written next to it? This means that we've set it as static on this particular computer. So we are going to go into our router like we did before in the previous tutorial and we have a setting over here called DHCP now I'm just going to explain to you what some of these settings are so DHCP server is enabled which basically means the router on my network is in charge of dishing out the IP addresses and we have start is 192.168.100 and is 192.168.1.199 so what it'll do is it basically means that Every computer that comes onto my network will be given an IP address between 192.168.1.100 and 192.168.1.199. Okay. Here we can see that each IP is only guaranteed to a computer for 120 minutes. Okay. And we can see that it's got its own default gateway. Um, and you can set the DNS servers here to 8888 and 8844 just to use Google's DNS, but I haven't bothered. So, this is just the DHCP settings on the router. What we want to do now is, we want to go down to the DHCP client list. Okay, actually I've just, I need to move this along a bit. Move this along a bit. Okay, so, what this is saying is, this is a list of everybody who's connected to the router, at the minute and my server would be amongst them and it's showing you all the different MAC addresses I've blurred them out because you don't really need to see them but it would be showing you all the different MAC addresses and then it will be showing you the IP addresses that they've been given and over here we can see how long their lease is before the server has before the router has to give them either a new IP address or it just gives them the same MAC address and releases it to them so the next one down, so we've seen our DHCP settings, we've seen the DHCP client list. Now here's where it gets interesting, address reservation. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, I've already done this, but all you have to do would be press add new. And you would type in the MAC address from earlier on. Okay, so see you would type this MAC address with the 7C, you would type that into here. So you are saying this computer, if this computer on this Ethernet port talks to the router, then give it, reserve this IP address just for that port. Okay? So what it means is, it means that when other people are connecting to your router and when your, sorry, when various computers from within your home such as your cell phones your laptops and things like that or whatever when they connect with the router the router will say hey 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 nobody is getting this address the only person who's getting this address has got this mac address and that way only your server on that port will get given that ip address and now it means every single time if your router gets switched off if your computer gets switched off, uh, sorry, when I say computer, I'm referring to server, it means that when everything gets switched back on, the only system that's ever going to have that IP address is your server, and it will not change. Okay, I hope I haven't bamboozled you too much. So now we know 
how to set up our IP addressing, how to do the port forwarding. We know how to um, how to set everything as static so it doesn't change. The last piece in the puzzle is dynamic DNS. Why it's handy, how you can use it, and yeah, I'm going to show you. And that's the last piece in the puzzle, and then you are going to be a certified server god. Okay, crew, I hope you like this video. Sorry about me getting a little bit confused earlier on, but uh, such as this when you're live streaming and all. But if you like this video, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and tell your mother, and I shall see you guys in the last part of this server guide.